you've got to remember, Richard, this plant has got two blowers. Let's go back. Yeah, see, we've got blower one, which oh, is the pig okay. blower, and blower two, which is the plant blower. Compliance with OSHA Standard 29 CFR 1910 Part 147 is mandatory at Radiomix concrete plants. Compliance is not optional. The law covers the servicing and maintaining of plant machines and equipment in which unexpected energization or startup of the machines or equipment or release of stored energy can cause accidents and injuries. Parts of the OSHA standard require employers to establish a program with specific lockout, tagout, and tryout procedures for all energized equipment at a ready-mix concrete plant. You know, guys, one of the most important things about lockout tagout is it's going to be one lock, one tag, one key for every guy. We can't be sharing locks. Every guy must have their own lock. It also specifies employers are to train employees in how to properly use and install lockout, tagout, energy disabling devices. It mandates that employees must train and employers must train workers to disable machines or equipment to prevent unexpected startup, energization, or release of stored energy. So how does OSHA standard define servicing or maintaining requiring lockout, tagout, and tryout? OSHA's definition says, ready-mix concrete industry activities such as constructing, installing, setting up, adjusting, inspecting, modifying, and maintenance or servicing machines or equipment all fall under the law. These activities also include lubricating, cleaning, and or unjamming of conveyor belts. Additionally, the activities cover making adjustments or tool changes to equipment at a ready-mix concrete plant, in which the employee may be exposed to the unexpected energization or startup of the equipment, or there's a release of hazardous energy. What are the proper lockout tagout procedures for this area? I would throw these two disconnects, I would turn this water off, and check here for the pump to come off. 